Hello and welcome back to Banner Page. This time we're actually playing on 2.1. It has just been updated and wow, gotta say that's that's pretty crazy. I have no idea what the changes are. I just rushed to download it as fast as I could and to get back in the game to record this for you. So let's see what we can do in this Sea Raider hideout because we've got to... We gotta do some damage here. I uh, did do a little bit of fighting off screen so that we could potentially get a little bit of extra cash. And I did manage to take quite a few prisoners. I think it took about five or six prisoners in the uh, previous couple of fights. And I was able to sell them for about a thousand dinars um, because I was able to get one leader and a couple of veterans uh, knocked unconscious, and that actually did make a pretty big difference. Anyway, I have a bow here. Uh, I actually leveled up, uh, I think, once or maybe even twice. I'm not entirely sure about that because I think we leveled up in the previous episode as well, and uh, I just didn't spend those points on screen. So, yeah, anyway, I specced into uh, strength and then into power draw and some um, weapon proficiencies and things like that. Oh, nice headshot. There we go. Nice headshot. And Sven, oh, Sven has leveled to seven. Very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Okay. We seem to be doing pretty well so far. Unfortunately, whenever I say that, it then ends up in us losing almost all of our units. So I've probably jinxed myself now, but uh, <laughs> does that matter? Does it matter? Yes, I think it might. Ooh, ooh, wait a minute. Can I actually get a, can I actually get a, a hit from all the way over here? Yes, I can. Look at that. Nice headshot. Very good, very good. Sven is an absolute beast by the looks of things. Very surprised to see that, to be honest. And Mattel, to look at that. She's also doing a massive amount of damage. Very, very well done. Now, the main reason why I'm actually attacking the Sea Raider hideout is because I've been given a task by um, Mr. Mariga or whoever it was. Ooh, we have some velvet. Wow, I'm actually really surprised that uh, we're getting this in the uh, Sea Raider hideout. Usually you don't get that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering whether that is um, a, uh, a, a an attribute unique to uh, Banner Page because uh, unless it's just extremely rare because I've never, I don't think I've ever seen Velvet be a reward in uh, in that kind of um, in that kind of action that you can take in uh, in a task or otherwise, you know, so that that's very cool because that means that we've got an even more cash potentially and there you go, there's another 1500 dinars we increased our relation with this guy obviously because this is Warband Relation doesn't really make that much difference in comparison to what it did before, unless you're creating your own faction and obviously needing people to join you and become vassals and so on. But I think honor is a little bit more important in that way. Although relation is still important, it's just not as important, I guess. Anyway, um, we can technically become a mercenary with the Vagias, and I think this might make the most sense because of course we do want to raid villages as much as we possibly can, because they already don't really trust us or like us in any way because we are, of course, a bandit. So I am actually going to be joining the um, the Vagias here. And who are we fighting against? We're fighting against the Nords and the Kurgits. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting. Okay, what else do you have here? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be doing that. Oh, wow. And he actually lost the one relation that we had positively with him. Okay, well, that's interesting. Anyway, this guy has 23,000 dinars in the marketplace. Definitely going to be selling my Velvet here. I think that that is perfectly acceptable. We now have 4,100 because obviously I did gain 1,500 from the task being completed itself anyway. And uh, now, we, now we can see what's going on here. I'm actually wondering whether I should use the sword. Do I really... Do I care about taking prisoners more than I care about being effective in combat? Because effective in combat is going to get us more experience. So I'm going to keep this just in case we come across maybe a looter party or something like that that we want to take prisoner. And then just uh, trying our best to take as many of them as we possibly can. And that, that basically is it. That's pretty much what I'm going to be doing um, if we come across something like that. But I'm probably going to forget, let's face it. I probably will forget to do that. So we'll probably just end up selling this at some point in the future. Or maybe I could give it to a companion. Technically, companions are much better at taking prisoners than I am because generally they know exactly how close to get to um, the enemies. We're actually going to be taking these mercenaries here. As I've said before, we are pretty much only going to be specking and uh, indeed taking things that are thematic to being a bandit and indeed 
Obviously, we need to recruit as many people as possible from taverns only. I'm not going to be using any factions uh, units whatsoever. So no Vegiers, no Saranids, no Swadians, no nothing. We're going to be using tavern units only. And obviously bandits, if we can get them. Anyway, um, okay, so this guy actually sells bows. And uh, because now we have power draw 5, technically I would be able to buy this strong curved bow. I have seen that there is a bow available that is... Um, I think it's like a strong war bow or something like that or um masterwork or something i'm not i'm not entirely sure about it to be honest so i don't think i'm going to be buying anything here at the moment i'd like to buy some fire arrows if at all possible so i think that could be really fun to see now this guy also as you can see here will teach you to improve your archery skill i don't know what that means i think it, it, it would probably improve your power draw or it would probably increase your um, archery proficiency, or maybe both, who knows, but look at this, 29,000 and 108 hours worth of training, that's insane, and then what else do we have here, uh, we have horse archery, yeah, I, I think I'm definitely going to use the horse archery training, because generally I have a, a pretty hard time leveling up horse archery most of the time anyway, and it would probably be a good idea, I'm going to buy some acres here, I'm going to buy three acres, just leave ourselves with a little bit of extra cash, we've got 3,000 left over, and then I should be able to uh, maybe buy some fire arrows here, if at all possible. Do they have any? Uh, it's going to be unlikely. I mean, that is to be... Oh, no, no, never mind, never mind. Okay, so we can actually buy some arrows here. These arrows explode on impact, which is... Oh, yeah. That is really, really fantastic. It's going to be super fun to see. Unfortunately, I don't have enough uh, money to, to buy this right now. But I should be able to, once I go into the um the uh the land area here did i did i already gain the money actually i think i already gained the money from this so yeah we still just have three thousand oh well that's actually not even a big deal we should be able to attack someone relatively soon and even if we can attack uh, maybe some nords maybe we can attack some nord vassals or something like that i mean that's the thing i think what i need to oh look at that we actually leveled up another two times that's really good okay so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be specking into looting as well. Do we have any companions that actually do looting right now? I don't think so. As you can see, Sven doesn't really have any looting skill to speak of. No, he doesn't. So basically, what I'm going to be doing with our companions here is making them into uh, combat companions. Anytime anyone is already specked into something, so for example, if they're specked into pathfinding and spotting or tactics or whatever, then, of course, we will focus on those skills. But if they are just combat companions, that's literally all that we're going to do. We're just going to give them as many um, combat-oriented skills as we possibly can and then just have them do that. That seems like a good idea to me. So what we're going to do is let's have a look at looting here. Increases the amount of loot obtained by 10%. I was actually hoping it would increase the speed at which we're actually able to uh, loot the villages. But um, I guess we're going to have to do it. I would like to get more Weapon Master and more Horse Archery as well. So I suppose what I will end up doing is leveling up my agility now. And I have two skill points. I guess I'm just going to go for looting because making money at the moment is pretty important. We're also probably going to be trying to level up our Weapon Master as well. And of course, now that we are pretty close to 12, uh, 12 agility, we should be able to also increase our Horse Archery. But that's the thing. I want to increase so many different skills and uh, it's a bit difficult, you know, it's a bit difficult to get all of those um, <laughs> appropriately leveled up as, as much as you would otherwise want. The, are these guys literally stopping the siege to it? Oh no, they didn't, they didn't stop the siege. They're actually uh, taking it. They, they took it pretty easily, actually. Um, what I'm actually going to do here is I am hopefully not, ooh, yeah, th this is, uh, this is maybe problematic. I'm not entirely sure. Do you think I could... Uh, he's, he's going to get in there, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to get in there. I was actually hoping to fight in the daytime. I'm not a big fan, in Warband at least, of fighting in the in the night because it's usually very dark. And it's going to be um, quite hard to see. So I'm hopeful that maybe I'll be able to... Um, do you think I can fight this guy? He's got nine Nord Warriors, uh, 13 trained footmen. It's highly unlikely I'm going to be able to defeat him with my small army here of relatively low tier units. I mean, let's actually just take a quick look at these guys. Okay, well, they've got some amazing throwing skill. I actually wonder, do they have 
throwing weapons? Yes, they do. Very nice. That's going to be very powerful, but it really depends. Ooh, hello there. Oh, yes, yes. Do you want to fight me now? No, see, see. Of course they don't want to fight now. All right, so let's go over here and raid that village. And who knows, maybe someone will appear out of nowhere and decide to attack us. All right, so it looks like we were, were actually able to do this. And um, look at that. We have some significant gains here in terms of the cash that we can otherwise make from all of these goods. And hopefully we'll be able to sell it all at nearby Rivercheg without being, um, well, without being attacked in retaliation for this. Most of this is actually food, which is pretty cool. All right, let's make my way back to Rivercheg then and uh, see what I can do here. And now we're going to sell it all and see exactly what's going on. So let's have a look. Okay, so Lordly Ale, I mean, literally, all of this is going to sell for such a huge amount. I mean, I could have sold the fine wine as well. We might as well sell the fine wine now. Why not? And let's sell all the salt. Technically, I could go to a variety of different places and um, actually sell these for probably a little more because, of course, as time goes on, uh, as you sell more and more of the same uh, type of good, you are going to be um, losing a little bit of the cost or a little bit of the price. But there you go. There's 4,200 from that raid. Very nicely done indeed. And now I should be able to buy even more acres. I'm going to buy another three acres. And we're going to go in here and buy these um, exploding arrows. Now, I'm actually not sure what I should do here because I'd kind of like to have regular arrows as well as explosive arrows so should i just unequip my shields apparently that is what's going to happen now and i should probably use a two-handed weapon of some kind i was actually not planning on using a two-handed in this series but uh hmm, it seems like i might actually be forced to do that so let's have a look should i use this i mean this is this is relatively slow i'm not a big fan of i i like bardish weapons but these are maybe a little bit too uh, a little bit too long for my liking but it does do a lot of damage i don't know i'm already going to be paying 3330 for this which is well basically all i have all right so this is a good time to test out our explosive arrows our newly acquired explosive arrows now do bear in mind that unfortunately i have Pretty much no money and the mercenary payment that I'm getting right now is minuscule it is literally the worst thing that I've ever seen uh, well it is basically native native mercenary payment and it is to be expected of course that they're not going to give you a huge amount um, initially and it is going to ramp up over time but my first week's wages were 150 dinars and I'm currently spending I think about maybe 300 400 maybe for my wages I'm actually not sure about that but yeah Pretty, pretty significant. Okay, so let's have a look and see whether I can do some damage. Okay, that that did not work out as intended. Oh, nice damage. There we go. Nice damage. Okay, can I get some more? Can I get some more? Yes, I indeed can. Very nice. I'm liking it. Okay, now let me uh, let's just let's just tell everyone to charge in actually because we kind of need to do that. These uh, take a bandits. What? Do you see that? I've got a. I got a javelin. Got a javelin in my shoulder. That's not very nice of him, is it? Oh, that's not very nice at all. Okay, well, let's see if I can do some damage here. There we go. Okay, so now it has gone back to normal arrows. Okay, so the explosive arrows are pretty cool. But unfortunately, I didn't really use them uh, adequately enough because I'm not really used to them yet. You know, got to get a bit more familiar with their explosive radius and all that stuff, you know. The standard kind of thing that you're going to expect to see when you use a new weapon. And uh, I quite like my new sword, by the way. I think this, the sword is actually very cool. I think it is much better than the mace that we were using. Even though the mace does have the added benefit of being able to take prisoners and so on. I think the sword giving us that additional little bit of reach really makes a huge difference. Uh, so as you can see, I actually only have 18 dinars right now. My weekly cost is actually a lot more than I anticipated. So I'm very much hoping that we will be able to gain a lot of money through this. 
which I think we will very well, uh, very much be able to. So let's see if I can just sell all of this. There we go. This is actually not even that much to sell anymore. So I'm pretty happy to just leave the rest. And there you go. We are now level 11 and Matt Held has leveled to level nine. Nice. All right, so let's have a look and see what she's all about here. Okay, so does she have any party skills? No, she doesn't really have any party skills but she is very good for a potential vassalage. As you can see right here, she has three leadership already, which is really good for that. And otherwise, we're just going to level up her power strike so that she can get even more kills. That's what we want from her. And we'll try to level up a couple of extra people here as well. Okay, let's go over to Rivercheck here and see if I can sell the loot. I very much like the design decision, by the way, by the mod creator to add additional dinars in the goods marketplace but leaving everywhere else relatively low in terms of cash obviously th this guy has quite a bit of cash because i bought some explosive arrows from him but uh other than that you know everyone else has about 400 to 500 dinars in comparison to the marketplace um the goods marketplace that is that usually has a, a pretty significant amount of cash by default which i think is really good all right, so we're going to be selling this now, even though I said that I might keep it, but I'm going to sell it because it's just generally not really doing much for us at the moment, and I kind of feel like it's just wasting space, making us a little bit slower as well, because obviously the more loot you have, the slower you're going to move on the world map unless you have a good amount of horses. And that reminds me, I do need to get some more horses. Maybe I can buy some, although I think they are actually quite expensive as it is and we only have about 600 or so yeah how many how many uh, acres do i actually have here i own 11 acres in this town right now so that should be a pretty significant amount of cash every two weeks and that's the main reason why i'm doing it because it is exponential in its growth it is not just going to give you a flat value every single time if you continue investing in this one town again and again and again it will eventually give you so much money that you don't have to worry about it any further. And hopefully, that's how it's going to work out. Ooh, now what do we have here? Oh, yeah. I was actually just running around trying to find some additional... Oh, wow. This guy was actually the fellow... Is this the guy that I raided the village of? I thought it was another fellow. Oh, well, never mind. Anyway, this guy apparently was the owner of the village that we raided earlier on. And... Oh, yeah. I came across him. He only has... 19 units available for battle. We only have 23, of course, so it is going to be a bit of a close-run thing, but uh, apparently the renown value is only 4. So I'm actually wondering whether that is indeed the case, whether he has anything that's actually that strong. But if not, then that's okay, because it gives us another opportunity to try out our exploding arrows. I was actually trying to find some more Tega Bandits, but obviously... Uh, I couldn't <laughs> for some reason. I guess they were um, they were either relatively too fast for me or they were too close to other units and I was actually trying to restore my HP a little bit because as you can no doubt tell I'm actually still injured from the previous fight and um, I think a number of our companions are also kind of injured. So I have to be very careful here. I'm playing very much like a Kurgit at the moment because we're playing a horse archer and I don't think that's really going to work out too well for us maybe at the moment because we're up against Nords which are pretty good units very defensive and there we go oh, did we really did we really kill him oh wow that's pretty amazing okay happy with that um, now let's see if I can do some damage with my horse archery here I basically just want to get my um, ranged units uh, trying to hit them as much as possible so if I can face the Nords away from my forces and uh, direct their shields over to me, then that's that's a win. You know, that's a win in my book. Okay, so unfortunately my levy archers are pretty awful, so I'm just going to tell my cavalry to charge in, tell my uh, infantry to charge in. Hopefully my archers will continue to support us, and uh, hopefully this will be a nice and easy win for us. Unfortunately, my... Uh, my, uh, <laughs> my mounted skills are pretty awful. I'm going to have to get very much used to uh, playing in Warband again, because it's been a while. It's been a while. It's very different um, in Bannerlord to fight on horseback. That's why it took me a bit of time to actually get used to Bannerlord um, and its combat system, because it has much more weight behind it. You wait around a little bit longer for everything to happen. So, you know, for example, boom, I can just literally swipe like that very easily in Warband, but in Bannerlord it is a much more 
thoughtful affair, shall we say. So it makes things a little bit more... You've got to be mm, thinking ahead a little bit whenever you attack because you don't want to mess up and get yourself killed. Anyway, let's see if we can... Okay, no, nothing apparently. Yes, that was a, a pretty fruit, a fruitless exercise, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. Anyway, there you go. We're actually here at the moment and uh, maybe I can make my way back to Rivercheck. I believe I just received word as well, by the way, that my acres that I have ownership over have um, have given me some cash. So I wouldn't mind going over there and seeing what's going on. Let's actually level these guys up into Mercenary Horsemen. Sven is leveling up like no one's business, isn't he? Look at him. He's, he's leveled up again. I mean, he's he, he's not like level one or anything. So, you know, he's um, he's got to get a couple of kills to be able to level up. So it's pretty nice. Anyway, let's go here. And uh, did, did I actually get my cash? Did I actually get my cash right now? It doesn't seem like it. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. Wait a minute. Wait a, wait a minute. Maybe I can... Yeah, my honor rating is now minus 40. I think it was minus 40 before. I just didn't see that. Okay, so let's have a look here. We're going to have a look at weekly budget. No, that's fine. Company overview? No, that's not going to help me. Okay, wait a minute. I'm, I'm trying to find... Ah, my balance sheet. There we go. So this is my current balance right here. I have 1,287 in, uh, in Rivercheck. I'm actually wondering whether I can collect it somehow. Is there another way that I can collect it? Because as far as I'm aware, it was just to go in here. But uh, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I just have to wait a little bit longer. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.